If you are using Stripe for your subscriptions and you're looking to move away from Stripe, but scared you're going to lose all your subscription data, today I'm going to talk to you about how you can effectively choose another payment processor or move away from Stripe without losing your subscription data. I'm going to give you the step-by-step so you don't lose any valuable customers and any valuable revenue. My name is Maria Sparagas. I help thousands of seven and eight figure merchants figure out their payment processing to be effective and efficient. And today I'm going to talk to you about Stripe subscriptions and specifically Stripe token. Now, if you have some kind of subscription product and recently there was a little bit of a war with Stripe and content merchants, you're probably getting a little bit nervous at this point if your only solution for payment processing and accepting credit cards is Stripe. And this is with reason. Stripe is very infamous in shutting people down uh, with little to no notice. So if you are working with Stripe and you have a subscription program and you're still actively processing with Stripe, this is the time to do it, to move your subscriptions away from Stripe, to make sure that if you do get shut down, that you are not caught you know, with your pants down and without any other solutions. If you've been, you know, shut down by Stripe and you're actively looking, I'm going to give you the steps to ensure that you can move all the data over. Now, keep in mind, your subscription data is your data. Despite what Stripe tells you, you are able to move this data. These are your customers. This is your customer data. And these are people that are buying from you. So you are able to take that data and move it over to uh, another payment processor or another solution. And Stripe cannot prevent you from doing that. So these are very key and important points for you to remember. You can move it over and they cannot deny you whatever they say or however they try to dissuade you from doing that. Now, let me explain what Stripe does. When you have a customer that comes into your cart, buys something from you and it's on a subscription, they create something called a Stripe token. Now this token, what it includes is the encrypted credit card information and customer information. Now it is important to tokenize your customer's data to make sure that it's secure. We've all heard of these data breaches and so forth. So by Stripe doing this, what they do is they're securing your customer data to prevent any types of data leaks and so forth. So that what they're doing in premise is very good. But what the issue with this is, is that they are tokenizing it and keeping it and storing it in their own environment. So you don't have access to it. So if you want to move processors, this is one way that they prevent you because you have all these strike tokens and you think that you can move them. But like I said, lucky for you, you can and I'll tell you how. Now, this token includes credit card information, customer name, address and so forth. So when it's time to rebuild or recharge the customer for their subscription, all Stripe does is grab that token and then decrypt it and send it to the bank. So that's essentially what the token is. It's just a customer record and it prevents data leaks. So that's why it's so important to use it. Now, one important thing is if you decide that you want to move move your Stripe tokens away, Stripe will only let you do this once. Once you move all your tokens, you should continue using your new methodology of storing tokens. If this sounds scary, you're like, oh, wait a second, Maria, I don't want to store customer data and so forth. So I am not advising you to store your customer data in yourself, but there are several tools that are agnostic to payment processors, third party vaults that are PCI and data compliant that you can put in all your tokens there. And then you can decide whether you want to work with Stripe or whether you want to work with direct payment to get a merchant account or any other service provider or payment provider. So you can choose whichever tool that you want. For example, Authorize.net. If you're using Authorize.net as your payment gateway, you can store your tokens in there. Authorize.net can connect to various different payment processors. So if, for example, you're working with processor A and you want to go to processor B and you're using Authorize.net's vault, you can easily move them and plug in your new merchant account or your new payment service provider in Authorize.net. Same thing with, for example, the gateway NMI. If you're using NMI, you can use NMI's vault And then any processor that you use can be plugged into that NMI account. And then you can move your your vaulted or your tokenized data. So those are two tools that you can use. You can basically choose a payment gateway that you like that's integrated into your shopping cart. And you can, you know, move all your tokens there. And then um, you can plug in as many merchant accounts or service providers that you want. And you can work through there. If, for example, you're like, hey, I want to use Stripe. I want to use my own merchant account. I want to use... Uh, 
you know, ADN and a whole and PayPal and all these different things. There are third party vaults um, that are external from gateways. So how it would work is essentially you have your shopping cart and your checkout page. That checkout page is going to be connected to the vault. And then that vault is then connected to your payment service provider. Um, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty. So if you do have specific questions on how to set up a third party vault, drop me a line. If I get a lot of comments about that, then I'll do an episode on that. But there is a way to store these in a separate place for any payment gateway and so forth. And you can call it up and use, for example, Stripe, NMI, Authorize.net, ADN, Checkout.com. There's a whole bunch of obviously different solutions. So if you're in, if your business is using multiple payment processors through various channels, you may want to use a third party vault. But for most people, you can choose a gateway like Authorize.net or NMI and use that vault because if you do want to change payment providers, these gateways will allow you to plug in any other merch account or any other payment service provider, and then you can still use the vault. So the important thing is to take your tokens out of Stripe and place them somewhere that you would like to work with, for example, the gateways that I mentioned. Now, you cannot coordinate this yourself. So I'm going to give you now the step by step of what you have to do. First of all, you have to choose your vault provider, whether it's a third party vault that has nothing to do with the payment stream, whether it's a third party vault that has nothing to do with the payment gateway or whether you choose a payment gateway. So you decide what your solution is. You have to set up that solution, meaning you have to sign up and create an account with that solution. Once that account is created, then you can contact Stripe and tell them that you would like a data export of your Stripe tokens. Now, they will not transfer them to you and you don't want them transferred to you. You have to give them the account information of your new provider. For example, I'm working with NMI, my gateway ID is this, and then you can get a contact person at NMI, or if you're working with Direct Paynet, you can let us know and we will coordinate this for you. We will take care of it and make sure that the data goes from Stripe directly to your PCI compliant vault. But if you're doing it yourself, no biggie. Contact whoever you're working with, get a contact name and then contact Stripe and have them essentially transfer that information to the new account that you have. Keep in mind, they could take a couple of weeks. So if you're in a hurry or if you've been shut down, you got to work quickly. Usually it takes about two weeks for Stripe to do this. I've seen delays go as long as three weeks and sometimes I've seen it go as short as one week. You really have to follow up constantly. It's not going to be their first priority because you're migrating away from them. They don't want you to move the tokens because that means they're going to be losing business. They understand that. So you have to keep on top of them. You have to keep telling them that you want your tokens moved and give them the information of where you're moving them because as I said, they will not move them to you and you should not want them. You don't want encrypted credit card data in your environment. It's a huge security risk for a data breach. So you want to take them from Stripe to another PCI compliant provider and they'll talk to each other and make that happen. Now, one very key important thing is that Stripe is transferring the token. So they're transferring the uh, customer data, the customer's card and so forth. So you can be able to continue the subscriptions and to rebuild your customers and so forth. What they're not transferring is the subscription data. So if, for example, you have a subscriber that's billed every first of the month, all Stripe is going to do is give you the customer's data, but it's not going to have the actual subscription data in it. So what that means is, for example, if you're working with a shopping cart that has the subscription data, that's great because then they'll be able to populate the gateway with the subscription data. If your subscription data cannot be transferred to the payment gateway or the third party vault that you're working with, what you're going to have to do, and this is a little bit painful, but you will have to manually enter the subscription data in your customer records to ensure that they get rebilled and charged again per the schedule of their subscription. So this is a very key and important point. Once you transfer over the strike tokens, to your new vault, whether it's a gateway or a third party provider, you need to make sure that the subscription data is also input into your new system because Stripe, you know, I, I don't know why they do this. Let's take a guess. They don't want to lose business. So they, they try to give you as limited information as possible. But they they come back and they say, well, you should have your subscription data. You should know when you're charging customers again and so forth. So you need to make sure you get your file transferred over and then you have uh, 
It could be that you have to do it manually. It could be some kind of data export. It really depends on who you're going to work with for your, your new vaulting system. But you will have to have another manual intervention to ensure that your subscriptions are input into each customer record. So you can ensure that the flow continues for the subscription. So don't just transfer over your tokens and then just sit back and wait. You have to make sure that you put the data of when the next rebuild date and so forth. I've seen this happen multiple times. Merchants transfer over their tokens and then they just sit back and wait. It's not going to get automatically rebuilt unless unless you populate the data of when the rebuild happens. And like I said, I don't know why Stripe does, does this. I feel like it's a little bit strategic on their end to kind of pigeonhole you into staying with them. But you have to do this once. And then once you do it, you have your new system set up and you make sure that all your clients are input into your vault. And then you obviously will be managing subscriptions from there. A few key things to memorize is make sure you sign up for your vaulting partner, whether it's a gateway or a third party provider first. Make sure you choose that technology wisely to make sure that it's going to work with you and grow. Number two, make sure it's agnostic, meaning you can use it with several different providers. Like I said, NMI or Authorize.net are two big gateways that work with several providers. So those could be good options or there's other third parties out there. Reach out to me if you need some names. Um, and then also, once you have that all set up, you contact Stripe and you give them the information of your new provider for your vault and you ask them to transfer all your tokens. So don't piecemeal this, just do it once. It's oftentimes Stripe will only let you do this at data export once. So make it count, do it, and then just continue, um, just continue using that tokenized system or that vault system. Now you hear me using these terms interchangeably. It's because a lot of different solutions use vault. A lot of different solutions use tokenized for all intents and purposes. And for the purposes that we're talking about here, it, it all means the same thing, right? So whether you somebody calls it a vault or a tokenized transaction, whatever the case is, we're all talking about the same thing. Um, it's, it's encrypted credit card and customer data. So that's what you want access to have that in an environment separate from Stripe. So you can make sure that even if you're continuing to use Stripe, and I'm not dissuading you, Stripe is a great solution. And I think that it does have some extra features that a lot of merchants and, biz and businesses want to use. What you want to do though is just protect yourself, protect your subscribers, protect your customer data, and use a separate system from Stripe to hold that customer data. So if something happens, like you're shut down from Stripe, and I have tons of episodes that you can watch of some nightmare scenarios that have happened. You will have your information in your customer data elsewhere. So if that ever happens, you're just able to move everything over to a new payment provider and your business is not going to skip a beat. So take hold of your strike tokens. Make sure, like I said, that when you have your strike tokens, you enter the subscription data. So the rebuilding schedule is input into each customer record. And then you can continue using Stripe and continue using a whole bunch of other different payment providers without worry of anybody shutting you down. It also gives you a premise for negotiation. If you want to negotiate with a payment service provider, your best bet is to negotiate from a position of power. When you hold your data and you have access to all this data, it's very easy for you to move from one provider to the next if you're not happy with something. Whereas if you're working with somebody like Stripe and they're holding all your customer data and you don't know where else to go, because if you do, they're going to take your subscriber information and not give it to you. Um, that's a scary thing, right? If you're running a business that has a lot of subscribers. So take hold of your information now. And if you've been shut down, start working on this right away because it could take a little while. If you have any questions on how this works and, and best practices, or if you need some advice on different vaulting software, feel free to drop me a line. And I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to reach out.